Just one extra example about this spanning set. Uh, it's a question 41. It says, uh, answer the question whether, uh, whether the set composed of these three polynomials, three polynomials, and remember we, last time for the first time we met with you the vector space of polynomials, and we now know that polynomials together, they produce a vector space. So we need to answer the question whether the set is spanning in the set of, in the vector space of polynomials of degree two or less. You can do this question in two ways. You can do it the way we did it on the previous slide by connecting this to the three-dimensional vectors, to the triple of numbers, and via this span in Fn lemma. Or we can do it directly. I will do directly first, and then I'll show you the links, I mean, give you some hints how to do it in the, in the indirect way. So our job is to show, uh, our job is to show whether if I have a numbers like this, a not a1, a2, such that, um, I have to open the whole thing actually. Uh, our job is to show this, whether uh, for any triple of numbers, a not a1 and a2, I can produce another triple of numbers which I will call lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3, subject to the following condition, such that, listen to the condition, such that if I take linear combination of vectors or polynomials, which are vectors in the, in the current context, if I take linear combination of these polynomials, that will produce this arbitrarily, arbitrarily, arbitrarily chosen polynomial with the coefficients a0, a1, and a2. This is another example where we use the concept of a spanning set, which I defined in the previous slide, and that's the ex expanded question, which is encoded in this one sentence, one line, in fact. Is the set like so spanning in P2? That's the expansion for this. It means whether for any polynomial of this type, I can find coefficients, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, such that left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. If you, you're looking at the question like so, and if you know only polynomials, all you can do, you can do this. You can combine all of the x squares on the left-hand side and equate the, the combined coefficient to a naught. Here it is. x squared p is here with a negative lambda 2. x squared p is here with a double lambda 3. So the combined coefficient of x squared on the left-hand side is negative lambda 2 plus 2 lambda 3 equal a naught. Similar combination for x power, for linear x, it will be lambda 1, here's the x appearing once, here's the x appearing twice, so that's the identity you come up with this equation, I mean, when you equate coefficient of x on the left-hand side and coefficient of x on the right-hand side, here's the identity, you come up on the right-hand side, uh, sorry, for the, for the free coefficient, free coefficient here, lambda 1, And the free coefficient here is a lambda 2. So again, you look at the question when a system like this, three equations, three unknowns, when the system like this is solvable. And if it is solvable for any choice for of a not a1 and a3, if it is solvable for any, this symbol means for any, then your set will be spanning. It's again a question which can be answered by the raw echelon form, by the Gaussian elimination method. You extract your augmented matrix. Here it is. Here's my augmented matrix. First row, second row, and the third row. I will take this to the raw echelon form. Again, I will just, I'm not going to bother you with the details. If I take this to the raw echelon form, Something is wrong? Yeah, it is a negative one. Uh, it is a negative one. Uh, well, we can do it like this. Uh, this piece of the software is powerful enough. It can give me the raw echelon form right on the spot. Let's just do maxima to echelon. That's the correct raw echelon form. We we'll just kill this.
So if you were thinking that you just caught me, you, you didn't. <laughs> Is the correct row that you'll inform? That's the correct row that you'll inform. Is the correct row that you'll inform? Uh, essentially, essentially, you don't care. You totally don't care what happens on the right hand side. It's just because the software is precise, it gave me the right hand side. If the, the matrix which was there before, you spotted the typo in my workouts. I just, uh, for simplicity, and actually, if I needed to save time, I would just put here just some, say, I would put here, say, a dash. I put here some other names, meaning that there will be some numbers here, some expressions which are totally irrelevant for the current consideration. So I put here some numbers which are totally, like I said, totally relevant for the current consideration. What is relevant is that the left hand side of my row echelon form, the left hand side, has all three pivots on the left hand side, meaning that the system is solvable, solvable all the time. And that's why, yes, the set S is spanning. If you're familiar, I mean, the other way you can do this question, you can link, this is a solution, which is a direct solution. This is a solution, which is a direct solution. You can, in principle, do the other solution, the one which, in, which will link this question to the question, uh, we, uh, to, to the method we did the question in the previous slide. You can observe, You can have some, something actually that uh, we discussed with you a week ago, last Thursday, that you effectively can identify polynomials with the three-dimensional vectors, with the triple of numbers, like so. If you have a polynomial with, ran with some coefficients like this, for that polynomial, you can take the triple like that, a naught, a one, and a two. Yes, and so if you now replace this polynomial, this polynomial, and this polynomial with a triple of numbers, which consist of the <laughs> corresponding coefficients, your S set will simply be the set of these three vectors. This is the vector of my first polynomial, one, uh, 0, 1, 1. This is the vector of my second polynomial, Neg oh, it's, an, it's another negative 1 type. Well, I'll fix it in a second. Negative 1, 1. So we run my 0. A0 is a coefficient of x squared. So here is supposed to be... Here is supposed to have negative 1. It's another type of the same sort. But it doesn't change anything. And 2, 1, 0. It's a coefficient of this polynomial. If you make this identification straight away, you can use the method of the previous slide, and then you will jump straight to the matrix like this. Avoiding this step and avoiding this step. Because as we discovered on my previous slide, if I would like to answer the question when the set like this is spanning, I take the matrix consisting of a columns, I, I'm, uh, consisting of a, this set as columns, and see whether my system is solvable all the time, whether I have all pivots on the left-hand side. And that would be another acceptable way to argue the same question 41.